Hi everybody, Sean Delman here. Welcome to your Walkthrough Wednesday. This is episode number seven. In this walkthrough, I'll be showing you how to start getting organized by using Microsoft OneNote, and I'll also cover what I consider to be some of the greatest strengths of OneNote, as well as what I consider to be its biggest flaw. I started using OneNote when I started law school in 2012, and I've been using it ever since. Thank you again to Chad Stewart for requesting this walkthrough. So to get started, if you haven't used OneNote or don't know what it is, OneNote is a piece of software made by Microsoft, which is used for taking notes, gathering information, and allowing multi-user collaboration. In my experience, it's very stable and rarely crashes, if ever, and it's also really easy to use. As you can see, we have our usual Microsoft Office style toolbar at the top, and then below there are these tabs, and on the right there are pages. One great thing about OneNote is that it's built in a fairly intuitive way. It has many of the usual Microsoft Office functions, and it functions like a real physical three ring binder, which is comprised of three levels. The highest level is the notebook. This is the binder itself, which holds all of the information. The next level is sections. These are like the tabs in the binder, which separate the different sections. The final level is pages. These are like the pages of loose leaf paper. Within pages, you can type notes, make lists with bullets or numbering, paste images or video, and even paste audio clips. Also, just like a Google Doc, you can set access controls to allow many different users to access any given notebook, which means that multiple people can collaborate in the workspace. Although I'm a fan of OneNote and use it every day, OneNote has one major problem which limits how useful it can be. There's no way in OneNote to auto-sort sections or pages alphabetically. To me, this is very unfortunate, because if you invest a lot of time into entering a lot of data into OneNote, and you create many different sections containing many different pages, it's not possible to automatically put the sections or pages in alphabetical order. If you want to change the order of sections or pages, you need to drag and drop them manually. Strangely enough, Microsoft is aware of this problem. If you go to Google and type in OneNote sort pages alphabetically, the first search result is a Microsoft page, which explains that it's not possible to automatically sort pages alphabetically, and that if you want to organize your sections and tabs, you must do it manually by dragging the sections or pages into the desired order. As a longtime Microsoft Office user, I've become accustomed to being able to sort things alphabetically, just like I can in Microsoft Excel or Outlook. The fact that there's no way to do this in OneNote has always been quite surprising to me, and I even used to search periodically to see if Microsoft had released an update to fix this problem. From the look of this webpage and from years of watching for updates, it looks like Microsoft yeah. is aware of the problem, but has no plans to fix it. The problem with Microsoft's recommended solution, to simply drag any of your pages or sections to the position you want, is that if we're dealing with hundreds of entries or more, it simply isn't a practical solution and it significantly limits how useful OneNote can be. No one wants to invest a great deal of time and energy into putting information into a system, only to realize later that the system doesn't have the functionality that they need to manage it. However, as something of a silver lining, because of how powerful the search function is in OneNote, it can still be practical to use OneNote without being concerned about what order the sections or pages are in. To its credit, the search function is very powerful, works quickly, and searches many sources simultaneously. I've never actually ever lost any data in OneNote or have been unable to find something that I've been looking for. Despite what I consider to be OneNote's major flaw, I still use it every day and find it to be powerful, easy to use, stable, and responsive. So how do you actually use OneNote? Depending on the version you have, it'll look something like this. As mentioned, OneNote functions like an electronic binder. Notebooks are like binders and contain sections. Sections are like tabs, which contain pages. And pages are like separate pieces of paper that contain all of your data. However, unlike a traditional piece of paper in a binder, the pages in OneNote can be added to and can go on and on. When used in conjunction with Microsoft OneDrive, OneNote is even more powerful. It can be continually backed up on the cloud so that you don't lose your data, and it can be configured to allow multiple users to access it and work collaboratively. It can also be used on your smartphone, which means that you can access your information from anywhere at any time. And you can even use the speech-to-text feature on your phone to put notes directly into OneNote without needing to type them out. As I speak my notes into my smartphone, they appear in OneNote on my PC, although there is some delay. Okay, so to conclude, as mentioned, I've been using OneNote for almost a decade, and I've mm -hmm. used it both as a student and as a lawyer to manage legal practice. Although it's not perfect, and I really think that Microsoft should add an auto-sort function so that the sections and pages can be sorted alphabetically, I generally think that OneNote is a great piece of software and works very well. Because the goal of this walkthrough is simply to introduce you to OneNote and warn you about what I believe is its most serious shortcoming, I won't go into the specific details of how I used OneNote as a student or as part of legal practice. 
However, if you'd like to know more about these specific functions, please just let me know and I can make videos for each and take a deeper dive into OneNote. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video and found it to be helpful, please leave a like, comment, follow, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have an idea for a future walkthrough, please just let me know. Stay tuned for next week's episode in which I'll be showing you how to stay organized by using the calendar and Microsoft Outlook as a to-do list. As always, I'm Sean Dillman.